Please remember to like, subscribe and comment as we love to hear back from our viewers. Also, if you enjoy our videos, please consider becoming a patron of our show through Patreon and or GoFundMe. Links are listed below the video in the description. From the deepest, darkest recesses of Dangerous Nerds headquarters, Keith Moncrief and Gary Cassell. Hey everyone, it's Gary and Keith. Welcome to Pop Culture Minefield. And it's a scary minefield. Uh, I uh, We already lost a couple of crew that were killed on the way in. No. <laughs> they stepped on one of our mines. <laughs> so... Um, I guess, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about Marvel. Yes. That's the Marvel, Marvel Day. Marvel Day. Marvel Day. Well, it's 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 going to be, uh, we're going to start out with talking about J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah, because, you know, the word is, you know, that uh, that he's going to be in Far From Home, at least in a small part. Yeah. Because they denied that he was not going to be in it. <laughs> a Sony. double negative. Sony. You so, and the 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 rumor going around is that they might gender flip the character and or maybe race flip the character. Wait, 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 wait! They're gonna flip them off. <laughs> it's the double. No, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not, okay. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're too nice. I'm a dick. So <clears throat> basically, they're talking about. You know the rumors going around. Nobody's confirmed this. Nobody's even denied it that uh, they might gender flip or race flip the character. Which, you know, I got to be honest with you, they did it with Perry White mm -hmm. with Lawrence Fishburne, which I thought was brilliant. He yeah. was great as yeah. that character. And but that's that's a character that race doesn't play a part in it. Whereas this character, it's a little different. And, a lot of you might not know this because we've talked about it on the show before. Mm -hmm. Is that J. Jonah Jameson is based on a real person, and that real person is Stan the Man Lee. Yep, yeah. that is uh, the artist's nod, and I'm trying to. That was John Steve, Rem Steve, Steve Ditko. Ditko. That was it. Steve. Because Peter Parker was based on Steve Ditko. The way Himself, he that's right, the way he looked. Because there's photos of him, that's yeah, right. In high school. Little round glasses, little oval glasses. Several people around the Marvel offices were the basis for a lot of the characters when Spider-Man first started. That's right. And so, Stan Lee is gone now. We've lost him. And I consider it really in bad taste to try to change that character for whatever woke reason that they want to do it. Uh, don't touch that character. You can do that with other characters. You don't do it with Stan Lee. Stan Lee is the reason we have so much of this cool stuff. Yes, Jack Kirby and all those guys, Steve Ditko, John Romita Sr., all those guys played a huge part in what we enjoy today. But the fact is, is right at the center of that was Stan Lee. He was at the center of almost everything. Well, he's the ringmaster. Yeah. And therefore... J. Jonah Jameson needs to be left the hell alone. And he should always, I mean, the best version, whether it be in cartoon or live action, has always been, because there was one live action version, was the TV series back mm -hmm. in, in the 70s. Uh, this iteration, single greatest, was uh, J.K. Simmons. Yeah. And, but Academy came, Award winner, yeah. J.K. Simmons. And don't get me wrong, uh, a lot of fans want him back. I would love to see him back, but is he in for the long haul? Because we've got another 10 years on this show, and he's mm -hmm. already in his 60s. Yeah. So they're wanting, you know, I'm sure, and this is what's been uh, talked about, is that they're looking for somebody in their 40s. Yeah. And he had some great ideas. Oh, I, I came up with an idea to, to use actor Adrian Pazdar. And it took me a minute, I'm like, I know that name. I know that freaking name. What do I know that name? And then he said, Heroes, and I went, I know, yes. And mm -hmm. he was in... Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. also. And he would make a very, very, very good J.J. He character. has the posture, the eyebrows, uh, the, the, the long face. And, and he has everything. He's even He even wears a crew cut now. Yeah, he looks good in a crew cut, too. 
a military cut. Not everybody looks good in a yeah. crew cut, a military cut. You know, I was in the army. I looked really like Uncle Fester. <coughs> hey, Gomez! I remember standing in the mirror just rubbing my bald head. <laughs> and, and there was like 200 other guys in this giant mirror all looking at each other, rubbing our, all, all of us rubbing our heads. And, and then I just perked up and I said, hey, Gomez! And everybody cracked up laughing because I really did look like Uncle Fester with the dark rings under the eyes, everything. But anyway, so uh, we've got that. And I agree with you. I think Pazler would be perfect for it. He's already part of uh, the universe playing other characters. And they seem to like to use actors who have already been in other stuff. So they, they know they love the universe and, and they love working with Marvel. Yeah, so, and, and Sony, Sony's looking for any help. So. Yeah, Sony's in trouble. Sony has um, done the stupid thing, and they're... Well, we talked about it. Yeah. We, I talked about it. I said, look, when the news came out that there could be the possibility that Sony could get the character back, I, I, my thought was, no, they'll take the character back. They're, they're going gonna, to take it back. Yeah. It's, there's no question about it. We've, we already see what they're doing. Uh, they want to have their pocket again of their version of Marvel. They're going to have uh, their Spider-Man working with Venom. Well, it's not just that. I, I really do think it's going to go further than that. I think what they're going to end up doing is they're not only going to have the Sinister Six, they're going to go ahead and just unleash all of it. So we're going to get Jessica Drew. Mm. We're going to get, um, I think we're going to go all the way even with Spider-Man 2099. They're going to do all the different versions of Spider-Man. That Try might not be bad, though, to that, me. That might not be bad. Because but... I really do like that Into the Spider-Verse. That was yes. a really good movie. And, and they'll definitely go with their version of Miles, but they'll also unveil Silk. And, and all of them, all of the Spider characters will become a part of this universe. Now, Tom is reaching near the end of his contract. Rather than let him go because he is so good, if you keep him and introduce other characters like Miles, like Jessica Drew and others, it allows you to hang on to Tom and everyone else. Now, right. you're going to have to pay him more money. But ultimately, uh, uh, that's a direction that will allow Sony to have their own Avengers-type universe with all these Spider-Man, well, versions of Spider, Spider-Heroes, right. versus all of the Spider-Man villains and villains that come with them. And I mean, they have their little war. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. There, there you go. He just summed up basically what Sony's probably going to do. So, uh, but uh, with hey, that, man. yeah, uh, <laughs> with that, we'll move on to uh, Iron Man 4. And uh, is that a possible thing? Uh, basically, uh, uh, a couple of the websites were talking about that uh, it was said by John Favreau that he did talk with Kevin Feige mm -hmm. about uh, an Iron Man 4. Uh, there was originally... Um, uh, a seed for that in the Avengers Endgame mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that uh, there was a potential possibility they could bring back Tony Stark. Yeah. I, I'm not sure what that seed was, but I'm guessing that, uh, uh, what do you think it had to do with one of the I, stones? I, I think it had to do with, uh, my personal view would be a hologram. Oh, you think? The new Jarvis would be Tony. Oh, that would be interesting. So, there's all this, a lot of things are open. Um, I don't know where they're going to go with it. I would like to see another Iron Man film. Yeah. See how they handle it. John Favreau, I love John. He's absolutely one of my favorite people. You, you I've been a fan of his since 1996. Yeah. And I've loved everything he's done since 96. And I trust him because he's a big old nerd. I think you let him do whatever he wants. If he comes to you, you know, you with an Iron Man 4, then I think he's at least earned in my opinion, enough to be able to do that. Yeah, I so. agree. So, um, I, I'm curious to see what they do, uh, if anything even comes from it. Yeah. So, But this leads us into the next section, which is uh, the, the Marvel Disney World. Uh, Disney has their Disney Plus coming out in November, on yeah. November 12th. Yeah. But they just announced today, they took full control of Hulu. And who did they pay off again for that? Oh, yeah, Comcast. Comcast always seems to get... We've talked about Comcast and China. Because Comcast and China, they want to be part of this thing. Yeah. Okay? And uh, because 
what we've seen, the landscape of TV entertainment, or what we call TV, mm -hmm. is changing. It's Quickly. evolving, and Quickly. it's not going to be the TV. We'll say TV, and it really isn't what it is anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're seeing this huge change with the streaming services, and uh, Amazon got smart. They're ahead of the game by allowing you to get all, a lot of those services through them, Yep. which they are now kind of a version of Mediacom or Cox mm -hmm. Cable. Uh, so all you need is internet, yeah, and you can get your entertainment through Amazon, and you can get Hulu and all these things. Now Hulu, Hulu was kind of shitty for a while. They kind of they they were hit and miss, and they yeah. didn't have as big a hits as like Netflix or Amazon. Yeah, uh, Amazon has put tons of money in. They've got deep, deep pockets. Not Disney deep, but they're deep. And uh, and this will lead up to another thing that we're going to be talking about in another episode, yeah. uh, which is the Star Trek. All we're going to talk about is Star Trek and the implications of Amazon. But Amazon has deep pockets. Now, Disney has Hulu. So Hulu already has a subscriber base. That's why Disney wanted it. They already had a stock in it, mm -hmm. but they wanted that because that's something to build off of. Yeah. So what do you think? What, what, what are your thoughts so, on uh, this? Uh, my thought is this, though. Uh, the only thing I would say about that would be, you know... They, they already have their own service with, with Disney Plus coming. To have Hulu, uh, while they could use that for some of their non... Um, from some of the non... Uh, 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 entertainment offerings that aren't really Disney Plus offerings, but they could get away with R-rated stuff and a few other things. while Because that's idea, what I saw. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you while, on that. While a good idea... What you're doing is is that you're, you're you're causing people then to spend more money, and my thought is that really the the important part of this story is this is another story of Comcast getting more money out of Disney, and using it to propel themselves and prop themselves up further. Because they're going to buy somebody, and and I think well, I don't even we're think they have before. To. Yeah, I don't even. Think I they think have they're going to. Gonna I think they're going to take over CBS. I really think that that's they're going to try. Next I don't think they'll be allowed to because they already own NBC. That's right. I forgot about that. Uh, they don't need to. So then China's the only one it, left to save CBS. Yeah. It, 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 what Comcast is is it's it's NBC, and it's also Universal, and them. So that right there, that's their own streaming service. But 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 remember how we got to this point was Comcast was the one that a year ago helped to bump up how much Disney had to pay in order to get Fox. Why? Because Comcast ended up buying, That's right. yeah. buying the British station, I think it was ITV, is what they wanted. And that was something that Bob Iger personally wanted because they wanted to extend the Disney brand overseas. And Comcast took it. So now they have a foot in the British market with all of the stuff that they got. So, yeah, Comcast is a competitor. They knew what they were doing. They held on to their Hulu stock long enough to make sure that Disney was really going to need it. And then they could pay them. Then they could just slide off to continue to do it. Because they are operating so far in the background. Most people, when they talk about the streaming wars, you're talking about mainly just Disney and you're talking Warner Brothers. Nobody ever really thinks about, you know, Universal. What does Universal have? They have the Jurassic franchise and the Fast and Furious franchise. Those two right there have made a lot. Both of those franchises have, have made billions. Yeah. So to even not even, it, 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 it almost is kind of sly because they're like that, kind of like that ninja way about them because they are creeping up on everybody you're not going to see this coming okay and they like it that way keep paying attention to disney keep paying attention to warner brothers even keep paying attention to cbs for as long as they last you're not going they're not going to last coming. long because the blood's in the water yeah uh, the blood is in the water and i predict that netflix netflix and cbs because are gonna, we're going to talk about this in the next episode yeah we're going to come back to this blood in the water thing but to keep this on, on the Disney Marvel thing yeah. is, Marvel is definitely going to be a big part of what Hulu's doing. Yeah. Because we're going to get a lot of the adult-oriented or mature-oriented 
Marvel stuff and and, and properties the prop and, and also Fox properties that don't have a place because on, they on have Disney Plus. they have exactly they have the entire 20th Century Fox catalog which now, in, which includes all of the Buffy verse all of Joss Whedon stuff including Firefly. Firefly and on top of that they have the single oldest still working movie studio. Mm -hmm. 20th Century Fox has been here since the beginning. Yeah. And there, I mean, what wasn't lost in that great fire mm -hmm. is really them. They own more films than um, Turner or Warner Brothers. They've got a huge catalog. Yeah. And so Disney now owns that. And tell you, that is going to be added to Hulu. That's the reason why everybody's scrambling. And, 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 and the reason why... Netflix is in trouble. And we'll go into that in the next yeah. episode yeah. with the Star Trek thing. But Netflix is in trouble. Uh, CBS is absolutely... They're in they so much trouble. They can't spending money like this. They, now, just they have no money. They have no money. Everybody's like, Man, they got a third season of Star Trek and a second season of Twilight Zone. I said, yeah, they're a green lip, but well, what money are they going to shoot that with? They don't have any money to spend right now. Uh, I'm telling you, because Viacom is still there, mm -hmm. and Viacom is not gonna um, get, give them money to waste. Yeah, and yeah, they right. wasted all that money from Netflix, and Netflix <laughs> is not giving them any more money. Yeah. So, all right, the one thing that we want to end with is, uh, of course, everybody who has seen the End Game. I'm not going to give it away. I'm just going to say there is no um, after credit scene. Yeah. Or mid credit scene. It's like you get the movie, you get your credits, and that's it. And now Marvel has upped the ante, and they have added the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer to be added at the end of Endgame now. Now, I saw that the numbers have dropped. Yeah. I still predict they're going to hit $3 million. I think they're going to hit $3 million before it ends. $3 billion? Uh, $3 billion, I'm sorry. Okay. $3 billion. Yeah. A million dollars? Um... They're, I think they're going to clear $3 billion with this film. Ooh, good luck. Even though they slowed down. And yeah. I know it's going to be after everything. Yeah. After everything. Yeah. They're going to clear, clear $3 billion on this film. Easily. Uh, this is going to be from uh, disc and, and video on demand. All of that. When it's all said and done, they're going to clear $3 billion. But Bob Iger, at this point, really doesn't care. Do you know why he doesn't care? Because in buying Fox, that means now Disney technically owns the top grossing movies of all time. They all belong to them. Yep. Avatar, it's, it's the closest thing you can get to a monopoly without being a monopoly. Yeah. Avatar belongs to Disney. In game. And I don't think Marvel. that's going to do well. I really don't. Um, and even, I think it was a fluke that the first one did. Somebody says, Hey, did you like Avatar? I said, Yeah, but I liked it better when it's called the Smurfs. But a bunch. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I've learned my lesson. You never really bet against James Cameron. I'm not saying, I'm not saying he's going to be able to take the top spot again. I'm just saying, I think those films are going to do something. And they're, they're definitely going to make some money. Well, I wish him luck. I think he's, you know, he's one of my favorite directors. Yeah. Uh, not my favorite. I, you know who my favorites are. Mm -hmm. John Carpenter and Ridley Scott. Yeah. And, uh, and then, of course, the classic directors are up there, too. Uh, you know John Ford, William Wyler, James uh, Whale, all those great. Oh my God, yeah, James yeah. Whale, yeah, Frankenstein, Frankenstein, uh, or Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, before those, he made a World War One movie. Yeah, you should be watching those. If the name James Whale does not mean anything, doesn't ring a bell with you, you, you need to go get educated and go watch some James Whale movies. Great filmmaker, some pop, very movie. limited career because um, uh, he kind of got outed. As yeah. homosexual, yeah, and so his career kind of ended. Ended, and but you should be watching the original Frankenstein. Yeah, with just, Boris Karloff. Yeah, just watch that, and the Bride too, because uh, you know, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the other Frankenstein films, Son mm -hmm. of Frankenstein, all that. Um, but the first two, the first two are the, are the only two that really are together. Yeah. They're they're two films that go together. Yeah. And, uh, and, of course, you have the amazing performance of Boris Karloff uh. as the monster. And people think, oh, anybody can get in that makeup. No. Boris Karloff played that character that was you were sympathetic for mm -hmm. him. You felt sorry for him. And he's a great actor. One Universal. of my favorite actors of all time. Nothing but, see, 
Universal. Universal. I'm telling you. Nobody talks about Universal anymore. I'm telling you that 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 that, that whole Universal monster thing, while Kurtzman messed it up, we haven't seen Bloom the last House, of it. Bloom House is coming in, and they're gonna. I think they might revive it. It all depends on what they do with this first film. Yeah. And uh, I'm hoping, because Bloomhouse has put out some really good horror films. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big horror fan, and I like what Bloomhouse does. So, we'll see. Is. But anyway, we're done. Uh, that's Keith. That's Gary. And this is Pop Culture Minefield, and we're out of here. See you guys next time. Bye. Y'all come back now. You hear Cubs win. Cubs win. <laughs>